a native of New Jersey, actor Derek Luke's big break came when he was cast by Denzel Washington to play the title role in the 2002 film Anton Fisher, for which he won the Spirit Award for his critically acclaimed performance. His versatility as an actor has also been shown in his other on-screen performances in the movie Sparkle, Friday Night Lights, Notorious, and Medea Goes to Jail, and in NBC's Trauma, TNT's Hawthorne, and the Fox television series Empire. Despite his incredible talent, Derek attributes all of his success to God, his faith, and his beautiful wife of 19 years, Sophia. Marriage Made Easy is pleased to welcome Derek and Sophia Lou. for these guys. <laughs> Have a seat, man. Yeah, it's uh, exciting. It's exciting. It's oh, exciting. it's so good to see uh -oh, you. Oh, is that your baby? You. you guys look marvelous. Thank you. Uh. So exciting. Look at this stage. <coughs> uh oh, is this that is, your baby? That's, that's, your that's our girl. son. When they hear our voice, they just, oh. he gets very excited. You want him to come up here? Sure, you want to say hi if to him real quick? Yeah. If sure, this, is, this will be the first time he will ever be on camera in front of anybody. So if we'll it's bring him okay, on up. Yeah. Bring Come him on, up bring here him on up, sis. With mom and dad. Woo! Oh. Emmanuel. Oh, he is too clean, too. Like father, like son. Oh, don't cry, man. Don't cry. It's You're perfectly so okay. Cute. This is how we. Chill and you clean too. Got hey your little hat come to the side. Oh, what's his name? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Hi, Emmanuel. Hi, buddy. You want mommy? You see the people? Hi. Look at those eyes. Like, I ain't talking to them. Yeah, like, he can sit sweet. right there if you want. No, we'll or you can take him in my like office. This. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Chris, you can bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Dad, he's going to have a fit when you hand him back over, right? Yeah. Marriage made easy. Marriage made easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are the kinds Thank of Thank you, guys, for letting us share. Oh, yeah. absolutely. We love you. You can... I know he didn't want to see her. He doesn't want to see her. He can it's... take him in our office. Tell him to take him over there in our office, teacher. He'll be fine. If you don't mind him screaming for a few minutes. Oh, oh, damn. That's all right. That's all right. That's normal. That's yeah, normal. That's normal. Let him cry. He's Go healthy. On. He's healthy. <laughs> He's healthy. Oh, He's all man. right. So, so what's happening? What's happening? Yeah. Let's talk about it. Finally got you here. Yeah. You know the steps of a good man are ordered by yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that you're here, I know you're supposed to be here. Amen. The, ex, the, the environment has already been established. The mm -hmm. atmosphere has been set. Mm -hmm. We're all ready for increase. Amen. Every yeah. couple in here Amen. is ready for increase. Yeah. And, and you guys got to be possibly two of the most spirit-led, spirit-filled, spirit-acknowledging people, couples that DD and I know. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, just your sincerity and heart towards the things of God, mm -hmm. towards your marriage, mm -hmm. towards your assignment. Mm -hmm. It's really impressive, Derek. Mm -hmm. Give us, give us the 411. Let's, let's back all the way. When did she ask you to marry her? <laughs> I mean, how, how, did, how did all that go down? I mean, where did you see her? She yeah. was looking across the room. You understand? Set it uh, up. Set it up. Go ahead. Set it right. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what? Uh, before, before I start, I'm just kind of impressed to share uh, that we are totally honored to be in the presence oh, of uh, the doctors here. Oh, man. Um, you know, uh, who your generals are 
is one in this house, but who they are when they're not here is even more impressive. Um, so, yeah. Oh, man. Um, so I'll tell you a real quick one. Okay. So we were at, uh, we were in Texas. We were at the minister's conference. And uh, sometimes after service, uh, you know, people are inspired and want to encourage, <laughs> encourage you. And so there was a particular individual, like, sharing a word uh, with me. It was a word of en encouragement. Um, but at the same time, Dr. Mike uh, was um, timely interrupting him. And, uh, and, and when he was interrupting, I says, well... I says, man, doesn't, you know, Dr. Mike see my man talking to him, you know? <laughs> he was prophesying. He was prophesying. <laughs> but what, what, I, what I sense, like, the, you know, that it wasn't just a interruption, it was a divine interruption. And that uh, he was cutting off someone for just, you know, they were sowing words, but it wasn't the word of the time. Ooh. And so what Ooh, I'm excited to preach right there, though. Yeah, you know, so, so I'm excited because uh, these are people who have the word of the time. And you can only go as far as the words that are deposited in your spirit. And so, you know, as me and Sophia will share, I'm just you know, we, we know that when we are in the company of true royalty. And so, and royalty is also family. So, Absolutely. they can't just be royal. You have to be royal too. Ah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Absolutely. Uh, the first Tell story. The story. Tell them what happened. The first story that comes to my heart is that people don't know. Uh, no, 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 hold on. No, I don't want to. <laughs> uh, uh, I love it. Sophia, uh, my wife Sophia, of uh, eight and a half years, she had a movie first, and it was called Knockout. And I remember uh, I was working in a gift shop, and uh, the people that I was working with, they said, you know, like, you know, uh, man, I heard you got married. You know, what did she do? I said, oh, man, she's an actress. I was just smiling ear to ear. And I told them who they were, who she was. And they said, oh, man, she's probably with another actor by now. And I was like, wow, that's yeah. like, you know. Um, but my, my, my point in, in sharing, what was my point in sharing that? <laughs> uh, um, the story. How great I am, honey. The, you know, the, the, the story just, I, I just want to paint a, a picture of how we started. Um, uh, here it is. So my wife always <laughs> wanted to go and minister and speak to whether it was young people or churches. And I was like, you know, I, you know I'm an actor. You know, I, I'm, I'm above that. Right. And, uh, and, and the Lord was like, no, 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 no. You know, you're, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And so the point was, uh, my wife used to get a lot of attention. Uh, you're right, right. Yeah, I, she I used to get a whole I lot of attention. Wow. Right, yeah, you know? he's setting it up. Yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> basically, you're doing good, honey. There was a, 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 a our pastor, or it was a pastor. The pastor said to me because somebody was prophesying to her and, and, and telling her how great she is, and every, <laughs> you know, and the Lord was like, "Well, you both are one." So if she's a queen and she's royal, then who are you? Come on. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I don't know who in the audience who have been, you know, ever dealing with a title in the marriage, but you're both one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not just, uh, you know, Derek, uh, Luke the actor, it's Sophia Luke the actress, but people don't know behind the scenes, man. Okay, I see. See, I see. See, I see. She's. I see. The Lord has prepped this Brilliant. wisdom. Absolutely. And she, this wisdom that it takes to be in any position in Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? And so, <clears throat> having a wife like this is, oh man. It, it's not just me. I, I wanted to introduce her properly yeah, before yeah, we go yeah, into it. And you're it, you know? protecting That's your good. your home so well, mm. and, and 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 you're doing it so strategically. I mean, you you are almost stumbling through trying to convey it the way mm. we should have conveyed it. And mm. sometimes 
We are lopsided here, Derek, to be perfectly frank with you. You know, it's Derek Luke. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, Sophia, his wife. Yeah. No, 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 mm -hmm. no. And a lot of the couples suffer through that kind of turbulence yeah. because it's Bishop so-and-so, mm -hmm. and then it's his wife. Yeah. Or Reverend, or Dr. so-and-so, mm -hmm. and then it's his wife. Yeah. I go through that. Every time we go preach, I'm Mike's wife. Yeah. You are not just Mike's wife. I'm Dee Dee's husband. <laughs> and, and some, <laughs> I've been in some, oh, you Dee Dee's husband. <laughs> but I like that. Yeah, and you I are literally too. giving mm -hmm. the kind of honor and props mm -hmm. to your lady as such. And we apologize because it was all one-sided here um, in your introduction. And the girl stands in her yeah. own yeah. right Same. alone. Oh, like yeah. prior Damn. to you, she was yeah. doing her thing. Yes. And for you yeah. to acknowledge that, yeah. it means a lot to yeah. see just little nuggets like that mm. you just dropped in here. Yep. Wow. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. Don't let it fall. Don't let it fall, really. Mm -hmm. Because some of you are real grand at work, mm -hmm. and you take your spouse with you to work, and they recognize them, oh, that's their spouse. Mm -hmm. But then when you get home, you try to bring your grand home. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to have that balance where you know that we both are just one. And then come you up may under. Come up under. As well. At least come alongside of them. Yeah. yeah. That was good. Good that's stuff. Good I appreciate it. Oh. So, so, now, tell us. <laughs> Okay, who looked at who first? I, I heard about all of that good stuff. The, the, the fix this up. Yeah. She's grand, you're grand. Uh -huh. Were you both in acting at the time you met? Well, I was, and, and we have to finish that story at the minister's conference at the tail end of what you did. Yeah, because no, you, you just to, made me it feel really like... Because really changed I, I, our lives. Like, wow. every time that we meet them, he says, they say, they both say something that is a cornerstone in our life and we'll be like oh honey this is the situation remember um pastor mike and Didi, they said this and we're like oh yeah let's utilize this here i mean mm. it's happened and we've enough. ministered the words that you shared and they're just such rich delicious nuggets so, i love it thank you so we'll have to share that at the tail end because mm. we want to make sure that we put a seal on that i love it please because okay. he just made it look like i interrupted him and <laughs> <laughs> didn't have any so relevancy no, no, to the interruption so powerful oh and you guys will be mm. blown away so that'll be the icing on the cake i love it i love so, it so um mm. we were at do you know who alan hattie hollingsworth is no alan hattie hollingsworth are amazing christian couple they have a uh, ministry called boss the movement and okay. vertical leap and basically they teach um, adults how to birth their dreams visions and ideas now vertical leap i've heard yes yeah. that's them they own that okay um, and he also has a uh, packaging company called aldolino, aldolino packaging okay so he uses his resources that he makes here to fund his ministry it, they how are a that? powerful amazing couple i love it so um i was in and out of relationships and i had gotten to a point where uh, it was in 1996 i got saved i gave my life to christ and i had been raised um in different religions. Um, I was uh, brought up in Taos, New Mexico with a lot of Native American spirituality, peyote mm -hmm. meetings, sweat mm -hmm. lodges, different things. Then on my um, parent, or my, my father's mother took me to, you know, Catholic church and stuff. So I was around church and God, but I just didn't have like a relationship mm -hmm. with him. And I thought yeah, yeah. it was just sitting up, getting down, saying Hail Marys and all of this. Right, right, so I right. really didn't have an interest in it. Um, but anyway, so, I, uh, I, I, my background was kind of like crazy, really rough upbringing, drugs, alcohol, oh, wow. like really bad stuff that were happening when I was a young child. But mom and dad, mom or and just dad, uh, what parents you were, encountered? Uh, parents were divorced okay. um, at five. Uh, my dad moved to New Mexico uh, when I was five years old. He was um, running from the law and also ah. from the streets. He wanted to get us out of the streets, so he went to New Mexico with less than um, a dollar in his pocket and just took us and ran, and so we, it was just crazy from Come there. On. That'll be a whole nother part two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a part two, because, yeah. oh man. So anyway, um, got saved in 1996, and I decided I'm done. I don't want to do these relationships anymore. I just want God. Come on. And uh, all I knew I had an encounter with God when I went to church. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. My girlfriend, I was having all these problems, and she's like, Sophia, you just got to let go and let God. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Like, right, right. how do you do that? Yeah, like, yeah. do you just say, I let go and let you? And <laughs> yes, it magically happens, and your whole life turns around. Like, what do you do? 
So she said, you just need to go to church and then God will take care of the rest. And I'm like, okay, go to church. God, take care of the rest. Got it. So she has me go to this church in Cleveland and the minister, and I had not been to a church that was spirit filled in my whole life. So I'm sitting in the front row and I'm the only Latin person there and everybody else is you know, African American, and okay. I was sitting in the front row, like, hey. Um, and Here I, I had, am. yeah, I had Como crutches, esta? yeah. <laughs> que pasa, hey, mi amiga. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting in the front row with my crutches because I just broke my foot from volleyball. And all of a sudden, they give the altar call, and I just start crying. And I'm like, what is going on? Snot's coming out of my nose. It starts shaking. And I'm like, what is happening here? And they're like, if anybody wants to give their life to Jesus, I'm like, I do. I don't know exactly what that means, but I'll go. I'll do it. So I'm left up there, crutching up there, up the stairs. And all of a sudden, the next thing I know, the church is all around me. Like, mm. probably about this amount of people, they're all circled around me in like circles as much as they can make in that front area. And the minister just started speaking into my life, and I didn't know he was prophesying at the time, but I was just like, did my friend call and tell him all the stuff that I was going through and that I was doing? Is that, but it was the spirit of God. So at that point, I just decided, I was in a relationship, I was engaged at the time, and just because you're engaged doesn't mean that you're dirty. And if it didn't work out and you're now engaged to someone else, so that's all right. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, God makes all things new. So wow, I'll try to make wow, I'll wow. try to make so much short, long story no, short. No, 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 because you're saying so much inside. And I pray that you all are taking out of Draw. what she's saying what you need. Just like that last word. Some may be in here because these some of the people are of course married. But then there are a lot of people who are engaged. They are intending on being there. Mm. That word right there could have literally, and that's what I heard. Mm. You sitting in here and you're unsure, but you still want to go forward with it because mm. of the feeling that you may get or the persecution that you may have oh, by breaking it off. Because everybody already know we're engaged. And how's it going to look? I can get out of this and get into another relationship. There's I was engaged twice. There are things inside of that. Yeah, I was engaged once as well. You were? Yeah. You never told me that. I was engaged. You know I was engaged. No, you never told me that. I was that. liking the girl so much. I told you, I said, no, you didn't if you don't that. marry me, I'm a man. I know you, know you was I t- engaged. It was, it was like in, I know engaged. You gave her a ring? This is merge, mate. You this got is the good. ring that she was supposed what? to get. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you her ring. That's the, that's the ring she got. <laughs> oh, well, she lost out on that one. Too late now. <laughs> you did good. Yeah. <laughs> Please continue. So I was, I was engaged twice, um, but this was the final engagement, if you will. And you know what? The guy had everything. And... Um, you know, I just, I knew he was just not good for me, but I wanted to choose that person. You so knew he was I not knew good. it, and, and, but I wasn't saved before I knew it, but I had that gnawing feeling. Like I was trying to make the shoe fit and yeah. just Cinderella's foot Come had on, corns preach, and preach. bunions and it just couldn't preach. get in that. So, um, I went to that church, I got saved and, and literally I felt an instant change. Like when he, they said, let go and let God, when I said, yes, I give my Lord, to, my, my life to Jesus Christ, everything like, like a veil had been lifted and you know what that it's a supernatural, you Absolutely. can't explain it, but it happens and you see it in the movies. So I, I was, I went back from church that day and I just said, I don't want to have sex anymore. Come on. And he was like, what? <laughs> I'm yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to do it anymore. I, I want to be a virgin again. I want to be new. And how do I, 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 I can't explain what's happening, but it's happening. And he's like, what church did you go to? Like, wait a second. It doesn't say anything about that in the Bible. And yeah, he started yeah, trying yeah. to use the Bible. I'm like, actually it does. But anyway, so uh, we ended up, this is, and, and I didn't know it was the voice of God then because it was a, like a small whisper. And I remember hearing in my spirit, real gentle, right after I had gotten saved, in the next seven days, I hear in my spirit, 
you're going to see what it's like with me without him. And I was like, oh, all right, great. You heard that. I heard it in my spirit. A a babe in Christ. Just a little tiny little wee. Yeah, I heard it and I said, okay. And sure enough, that seven days, he was calling like, what's going on? Like, I didn't care. I didn't care about him at all. All I knew was I had peace. I had love. Like, I had like this love and and so there was no communication with him. Well, I was living and, with him, but he was gone because he was traveling. Yeah, yeah. For like four of those days, but I, I was, used to shack too. Did you? Yeah. Did you, you know that? Ooh, you had that. <laughs> I heard. What you hear? I heard this as as clear as I'm speaking. When? When you was there? Or Just there? a minute ago. Oh. <laughs> All of you who are anticipating on getting married, you take a seven-day sabbatical, a break. You stop communicating with one another, and you just get before God. Seven days. It may determine... Mm. Yeah, whether or not you end up in this... Whether or not or you are supposed to be doing this, okay. what your marriage is going to look like, what it's going to be like. I- I'm saying, you can hearken unto these words if you choose to or choose not to. I'm telling you what I heard. You take seven days without communicating to one another, and you take that seven days, and you just talk to God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. It's powerful. I, amen. I agree. And, and don't be afraid. Just don't be afraid, because this is life. And this has to do with your children that are not even on the earth yet. Um, this is big. It's purpose. It's big. It it's could purpose. destroy you. It could destroy the person you're with. They don't belong to you anyway. They belong to God. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I broke up with a guy, and um, we were engaged, and I lived with him at the time. And he played in the NBA, so he was traveling a lot. Here we and go. Here no, because there's a testimony to that, honey. Settle down. There's a testimony Settle to that. Settle down, Jeff. <laughs> no, there's, there's big testimony to this, my sisters. My sisters. I was in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Derek. So I love you. you won a championship. <laughs> That's right. He did. You got the yes, ring, Yes, he's boy. got the ring. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... So uh, I just remember just having this peace. And when God said, this is what it's like if you choose me, because that person was my God. The person I was engaged to, he was my God. If he wasn't happy that day, I wasn't happy. If he didn't tell me he loved me, I didn't feel loved. If he was out cheating on me, I felt worthless. Uh, He was my source of my strength, my joy, my peace, my my everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was like crack. Mm -hmm. I was addicted. And that's not love. Nope. I was on crack too. You were? No, I'm just. Listen, y'all know him by now, right? But that's so that is that's so good because that was the only thing I tell everybody. That's what I made him. I made him the source of my satisfaction. And if it didn't go right for him, it didn't go right for me. If he didn't treat me a certain way, then I wasn't happy about who I happened to be. Until I realized that God had to be the source of my satisfaction, that's when I began to turn things around. Because it caused me to just, you know, continue to move forward. Because when you make them your God, it's like, okay, you don't even need God the Father. It's like, this is my idol. And then he's jealous, God. And he's a jealous God. He's just not going to share that spot with Absolutely. anybody. That's so true. And, and I, doing that, like, I was doing it at an unsaved state, but now that we can tap into the marriage portion of it, that when it's not fair that I would put all of that pressure on Derek or any human wow. being. That's good. You know, like, that's not, this just doesn't make any it's sense. Not it's even not It's fair. not, there's, it's it's not to even put fair. That pressure. Because it's on not, it's, you can't even, there's no, that's like a whole other world. The weight is too No, much. it's too much. So he'll crumble with can't that. And that pressure, and I heard Keith Moore say something before, and it was about placing a draw. You know how, as you're sitting here, you're placing a draw on the anointing in us. Absolutely. And them, that we can also place a, a negative draw. 
So if I'm drawing that expectation that he is, can't, he's not alpha and he's not omega. Mm -hmm. He cannot meet that. So I'm, I'm placing this false expectation, which is causing him to crumble as a man because everything that he does is mm. not right. It's mm. not good enough because he's not God. Mm. Does that make sense? I, yes, absolutely. Totally, totally. Yeah. Would you say that that person is not complete in their relationship with the Lord mm. when they are looking for that mm -hmm. totally. which they can only get from God oh through their God. spouse? Oh totally, God. totally. Oh my God. And, and he's not my first love. I yeah. thought I had a first love because I always would refer to this guy in high school that was my first love. Mm -hmm. And one day years ago, I was just spending time worshiping the Lord for my birthday, just thanking him. And all of a sudden, he just tapped into my heart and he said, I am your first love. And any time your relationship system is out of whack, it's because your system is not in its proper order because you've made Derek your first love, but the system of marriage is... What, what is happening right now? I told you. That's the systems. He's been teaching on systems. Woo! Wow. Girl, so, girl. So you tapped no, into at it. Keep at it. It's good. Now, it's welcome good. to the Sophia Luke Show. I told you. I'm saying. I'm just saying. Are you all getting ministered to? Um, so the system of marriage is God first. He's my primary, my ultimate, my alpha, my omega. The one that I get my juice from. If he was an orange, I'm squeezing him and he's providing that nutritious vitamin C that then I pour onto my husband. But if I'm if I'm putting him first, he gets dry and brittle, kind of like the Mojave Desert, and I can't, and things start freezing up in my relationship. So when, whenever things are starting to go wrong in our marriage, I'm like, oh, wait a second, I need to do a systems check. <laughs> and like, ah, just get back in. Did I say something that, that you've good. been saying? Has he been saying systems check? That's good. He's got the stinky face on right now. <laughs> <laughs> stinky face. Good breakdance yeah. move. Or, yeah. mm. So, um, so I got saved. The guy, seven days, great. Uh, ended up moving away. Went to California. Said I'm going to stop having relationships. Period. That I'm totally going to focus on God, and it's all about me and God, 100%. And I said, God. Look, I've had the guys with a whole lot of money. I've had the jerk faces. I've had X, Y, Zs, but I want a man of God. Like, I don't care. Get this, guys. I don't care if, and this is my prayer, literally. I don't care if he doesn't have any money, if he doesn't have a car, if he doesn't have a job, if he doesn't have this. I don't care, Lord. I, no. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just being 100 with you. Like, this was my heart. I said, all I want is two things. Number one, I want a man of God. I want him to love you more than anybody. And I want him to love you more than he loves me. Now, I'm just a baby Christian, so all this, this has got to be coming by it's the Holy good. Spirit, it's right? Good. So, and then I said, and number two, he's got to have a vision that I can pour into. And again, I'm just a baby Christian, so that's gotta be the Holy Spirit, his unction just asking me to pray this prayer. So fast forward. Can, can I stick a yes, please, please. Why was vision important? Man of God and vision. Why, why, why did you make that right under? Why did he have to have vision? Um, to me, he had to have vision because I needed something to pour into. I couldn't be, uh, like an abyss, something dark that just consumes and there's no ending. But Our wives pouring yes, in yes. to something that has no vision. Yes, all the time. Content yes, container. Are, are we just pouring and there's nothing being filled? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want something to help with. It's like, give it to us. Yes. Weird. Take Man, it. If you don't, if you don't have vision, and your wife can't clearly articulate your vision back to you, th that's an assignment tonight. Yeah. You're doing great. 
continue. God and vision. Uh, yeah, a man of God and vision. And I, I just believe that if, if, he, if he has a vision, number one, I can pour into it. Number two, I know he's focused. Um, and I know number three, that because if he loves God first, then that vision is going to be orchestrated by God. Mm. So then I'm safe. Come on. So fast forward, I get a movie. It's my first movie. I'm like going to these vertical leaps every month. They still have wow. these vertical leaps every month for now 30 years. And they teach you about discipline, focus, vision, how to receive a vision, how to start a business with no money. I mean, like, like doing the supernatural, natural. Mm -hmm. So Doing the supernatural, natural. Natural, yes. Oh, that's good. He's just pulling all the nuggets uh, I'm, out. I'm, 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 I'm a listener. Uh, I love so, it. And I'll try not to be like the consumer of the conversation. No, but take it. No, it's okay. good. Derek it's has good. nothing to say. He's just here. <laughs> he's just he's, he's the broke good. guy. Yeah. The broke guy that came yes. along, that yeah. loved God and had vision. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, so he's just your husband too. Oh, honey, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I go to the seminar. I, I get this movie, and it's my first audition, and I'm just thinking that I'm just going to just do amazing. And... So I start going to these seminars. It's month one, it's amazing. Month two, thank you, Holy Spirit. Supernatural, God is supernatural. There's no toil in finding somebody. Mm. There's no toil mm. in relationship, mm. keeping mm. the relationship. There's no toil, you know? Mm. So I go to the there's seminar. There's no toil. No toil, like that, trying to constantly make it work, but there's just this element of toil. That's a system, again. And, the and system then, of the and world. Then that, some, that was a word that just was Yeah, and some see that prior that. to saying I do. Mm -hmm. Toiling. Mm -hmm. Prior to pre-marriage. Mm -hmm. Toiling. Mm -hmm. And still foraging through it. Mm -hmm. Seven days mm -hmm. with God mm -hmm. is going to resolve all of that. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Toiling. So, um, toiling. So, uh, where was I at? No, that was a word that was interjected there by the Spirit of God. So she offered toiling. So now she's back to going to those workshops. Going to those seminars. The seminars. And again, I'm just talking about the supernatural. So I get a word from three different people on three different occasions, and I don't tell anybody this. So nobody knows that this person had given me a word. That three words before I went to the second month of this seminar, this Christian seminar, was, did you know your husband is just around the corner? And I was like, in the name of Jesus, yes, yes, I want a husband so bad. And I was trying to be this Proverbs 31 woman. Like, I was reading Proverbs 31 every morning. In the name of Jesus, I'm a virtuous woman. In the name of Jesus, I open my hands to the poor. In the name of Jesus, like, and I felt like I've got to try. I was toiling again to be this Proverbs 31 woman. And God was like, were you born a woman? I Come said, on. yes. Come on. He said, did you have to toil? I said, no. He said, do you have to toil to even think about whether you're a woman or not? That's I said, good. no. And Just he's like, be. when you got born again, you became that Proverbs 31. Now you are it. And I'm like, I'm it? I don't have to work for it? Like, really? Like, but then it needed to be developed. That's right. So that was just a sidebar. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So then those three words come. Now month two. Are you guys tracking with me? Am yeah, I talking yeah, too fast? Are you, are you Everybody's tracking with still me? With oh, yeah. Okay. So I go to the seminar, and now it's month two. I had received those three prophetic words. Again, the supernatural, no toil. So I'm just standing and holding on to that word. And all of a sudden, we're here at the seminar, and it's day one, midway through it. And there's a huge, massive group of people inside the room. And all of a sudden, I like sense this light in the corner. And I'm like, there's a glow in the corner. And I look over, and Derek is sitting there on a stool. And I'm like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Literally, and I'm like, in the name of Jesus, Satan, I rebuke you. Like, I'm like, because I was, you know, I was in the zone. Like, no relationships, yeah, yeah, no looking yeah, at God, men. It's me and you, God. I'm in the zone. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, yes, is supernatural natural. is natural. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that was no toil at all. Like, that was eye candy. And I had made, <laughs> I had made a, a husband list because my spiritual mom said, now that you're born again, make a husband list. Number one, he's a man of God. Number two, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit Jesus will start um, highlighting attributes of uh, characteristics that you find in different friends mm -hmm. and men. And now you put that on your list. But the Holy Spirit will bring it out, and yeah. you'll know so you don't have to toil for that either. Mm -hmm. So I had my long list. 
And the last portion was, what's his ethnic background? I was like, Psh, I don't care. He could be Asian, Mexican, black, I don't care. But then when I saw Derek, I was like, and I would like him to look exactly like that guy. <laughs> and he was gorgeous. I mean, and he had this glow about him. So then I rebuked the name, I rebuked Satan, and I got back in the zone. And, and uh, then shortly after, an hour or two later, they, uh, the leaders instructed us, sit next to somebody you know the least. And we're, I'm like, great, OK, cool. I was over the whole, like, oh, thing. So I get my books and I say, and you know when you feel that energy of people liking you, like guys mm -hmm, checking you mm -hmm, out or something, mm -hmm. you kind of like feel weird. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I need to go to a safe space because mm -hmm. that's how I felt at that seminar. Mm -hmm. So I said this to God, again, supernatural. I had my books underneath my chair and I reached under and as I'm reaching under, I said, Lord, I'm gonna look up. And when I look up and everybody's moving, no wherever way, I really. look, come on, come no, on, I'm come telling on. you, this okay, is supernatural. Okay, all right, okay. Wherever I look, Lord, I'm going to sit there. And so I'm like spinning around in my head, not physically. So I pick up my books and I go, hmm, hmm, hmm. And I look and Derek is sitting right there. And I said, I said I was going to sit there, but that's not the reason. God, you know my heart. <laughs> so I, I pick up my books. And I sit down and I'm, I'm cool, I'm good. I'm thinking he's cute, but I rebuked him in the name of Jesus, so I'm good. So I sit down and all of a sudden I'm like, he smells good. And then I look over at his hands and I said, oh my gosh, he's got clean hands and nails. I love clean hands and nails. Oh God, maybe I need to move Lord in the name of Jesus. But they started, I'm like, stay focused, stay focused. And I said, hi, and he said, hi. And I said, oh. <laughs> Then I focus, and then all of a sudden, supernatural, the Holy Spirit starts telling me, he's an actor, he's this, he's that, he's this, he's that, and just starts going down the line, and I'm like, whoa. Then the leader of the <coughs> seminar calls Derek up and says, Derek, why don't you come on up and tell us a little bit about wow, yourself? Wow. And the majority of the things that so he's- So you didn't know. I didn't know, I didn't have to say, hi, how you doing, what do you do? He, so Derek stands up and he starts saying what the Holy Spirit had just got done telling me and I'm like, wow, maybe I'm supposed to like pray for him or something. That, I don't know. I thought maybe that's why God was telling me that. I don't oh, know. She prayed all right. So then I, um, uh, I was like, okay, this is great. He's gorgeous. He smells delicious. Just stay in the zone. And I just kept staying focused. Then um, the people asked that run the seminar asked if um, there was people who had vehicles that can take other people home. Come on. In come the on, areas. And I was on. like, sure, you know, they were like, whoever has vehicles in these three areas, raise your hand and meet us up at the top floor. And so I'm like, okay, I'll help people because I have a truck and I'll do that. And so then um, people who needed a ride, they go up there. Well, Derek happened to be a person that needed a ride. Ooh, Jesus, come on. So I'm like, wow, wonder where, where he's going. Yeah. Well, he happens to live near me in the Pasadena area. No so I'm way. like, hmm, so he's riding with me. <laughs> and then another guy was riding with me too. And I was like, okay, cool, he's riding with me. But Derek, so we get in the car, and Derek is just as quiet as he is right now, sitting in the back seat, and this other guy in the passenger oh, the seat, he's like, separate. I'm putting in my application. I just want you to know, sister. And I'm like, what does that mean exactly? What does that mean? He's like, you know, you're fine, and you're a sister in the Lord, and this. And I'm like, okay. And Derek's in the back like, and I'm like, why doesn't the guy in the back say anything? Like, so I'm like, wait, well, is he prejudiced? Like, I'm laughing, like, is he weird? Like, no, I'm just being really real. And that's, I was, all these questions. So then, guess what? So we're driving home, and this guy in the passenger seat is just talking, talking. But guess where Derek lives? Oh, around the corner. Just around oh, the corner snap. from my house. Doesn't take but three minutes to get there. Wow. And I'm like. So that word was literal. It wasn't figurative. I'm thinking he's riding around uh, the corner. It just went right in. Supernatural. So 
That was the... So when you dropped him off, are you hearing this word? I'm thinking, am I hearing something, Lord? Are you talking to me like, tell me what's going on? Like, because I was so excited and anxious to have a husband. So take over. Yeah, take over, honey. Go, take <laughs> yeah, over. Take so over. what Do you happened? What, what are you thinking? Um, so what I'm thinking, I had never, ever consecrated. I had never fasted. Um, I grew up, you know, in the church, around the church. Um, I knew the, the word. I was familiar with the word, but I never put it in action. You know, it was like the word was just more like accessories. It was like furniture. Wow. Wow. Um, you know, like the front room, you see it, but you never go and sit there, you know? And so, um, you know, so, um, so basically, thank you, Holy Spirit. So basically, um, you know, we're, I'm here at the this, this seminar, and the way they're describing it, like it's this uh, backing up for me. I was dating someone as well. Uh, I asked and she her, dropped him off, yeah, by the way. Yeah, she dropped me off. The girl he was dating dropped him um, off. Oh, she and I, and I, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I tried, I tried to selfishly tell her to, you know, stay, because, uh, you know, I didn't have a car. I was from the East Coast, and... Public transportation wasn't the same in, in Cali as in Jersey and New York. And so uh, she, dro she drops me off. And, um, you know, I just had this image of, like, what fasting would do. Well, fasting did everything opposite of what I thought it would. Mm. I mean, because I found out that there's two appetites. There's a spiritual one, and then there's a natural one. And there's nothing like when you find out opposed to people are telling you about it. And so mm. my, my mouth was closed, but my spirit was eating like hands over feet, you know? And so that night, uh, I think it was the first night, second night, finally, because it's like a 21, uh, 21 hour seminar. And I'm like, man, this is brutal. Um, but I get to a point where I get my second win and uh, I don't, recall the part where Sophia, like, I don't think I saw her until she sat. And then she sat next to me after the speaker says, sit. Huh? Oh, okay. I'm going to reenact it. Okay. okay. All right. Do, 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 this is the reenact. So, and I yeah. Like and then, boom, that's your wife. No. Wow. And I, first of all, I never heard an audible voice, and I didn't know to respond to either the audible voice or to her, because uh, it was so loud, and it was like, man, that was the voice of your spirit, but without clutter, you know? And so the seven days is not to, to, is not to punish you, it's not to handcuff you, it's to deliver you, you know? And, you know, it's, it's not, to punish or handcuff you, and yes, let me, we are delivered. But some of us need to be delivered from the kitchen from time to time, you know, from our routine. Ray, raise your hand, you dude. know. <laughs> and so it, it, was, it was monumental because I didn't know that the Lord just needed that That's little time. Amazing. To change my mind, change my circumstance, just that little, just th that's your wife. It changed it for me because I, I heard you can hear from the Lord, and I know he speaks other than audible voice, but it was like at that moment, for me, like I became a son, you know, because I, I knew about the Lord, but it was the first time I heard. Wow. And so- uh, You became a son. son. Yeah, it was like, that's, that was the yeah. sense, like I heard his voice, yeah. um, opposed to hearing others and my voice it was like him i heard from him and it was like identity came and those who are led by the spirit of god are truly sons, sons those are sons yeah. and, and it will establish that position in you when you know his voice as such yeah so many men are born again and don't even know mm. that they're a son right yeah go 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 on i just no that's uh so you know i didn't even know that i needed uh, a father's love or to know my father's voice because uh, I have been, you know, searching for that father image uh, on TV, uh, through music. I mean, I really, you know, like Pac and Biggie and I thought 
hip hop was very masculine. I thought uh, where I live, the Nation of Islam was there too. And you know, you had them. And then in the church, you had mostly women. Right. But then on the corner, you had mostly men, but they were the Nation of Islam. And you know, you get in those conversations, what's up, brother? Yeah. You know, you're right. a Christian, I'm a, I'm a Muslim, why can't we talk, brother? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you, get in those, you get in those conversations, you know what I'm saying? It's just the devil is trying to keep us apart, brother. But the truth, man, you know? And so I was just like, yeah, 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 you yeah. You know? And I was like, yeah, man, that's how I feel. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then he was like, bean pie, my brother, just a dollar fifty for you, you know. Um, so the Lord, like, he began to, you know, talk to me about, like, you know, surrendering. And I got to a, a place just before I met Sophia. And it may sound funny, but it was like maybe about a week or two weeks. And I got to this bliss where I wasn't, you know, needing a ride from a girl or trying to get anything from an individual, it was like I was trying to get something, you know, to 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 God, and and I, I just was available. And just within those two weeks, I remember uh, the Lord began to minister to me uh, because I would walk where I was staying. I was staying on a bunk bed, uh, my buddy in, in California, and I would have to walk to work. Wow! I, and I remember uh, the key when I would walk to work was this bank. And the Lord was like even, you know, teaching me about I'll save money. And I remember him and he, like the Lord said to me, he said, Derek, you can deposit into your wife's account like you deposit money into your bank account. And he said, one, you know, you can begin to curfew yourself as if your wife is at home. Uh, oh, you can be, begin to have conversations as if she's in your presence. So I would get home and my roommate and his mom wouldn't be there, so I would sit around the table, and all of a sudden, it would be just this, this unction. And it was, I, I took, I, I probably took a little of my wife from Claire Huxtable, but um, <laughs> I had this sense, I would sit around the table, and I, it was almost like I would feel the temperature of her spirit. And like, I would begin to just talk to her, and then talk to my kids, and the most thing I could sense was peace. And when I was looking, you know, at like girls, and the Lord, I remember he, he would correct me. He was like, no, no, Derek, see, you, you can love her, but I can't. So she, okay, she said, that again. I, like, I, you can love her, but I can't. Like, I was looking at outward appearances only. Oh. And, and oh. so, and, and, and I'm gonna be real, when I met Soph, and I got fired for this one time, you know, I... I you got fired? I, I got fired. Like, I used to get fired for this. Oh, fire. For the comment. Okay, fire. fire. Okay. And so the comment was, don't get mad at me, all right, was that I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood. And so, I mean, I wasn't racist, but I wasn't familiar with other cultures. And I began to tell people when we first got married that, hey, uh, you know, it's, you know, like, like a brochure, like, you know, it's my first time dating outside my race, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm like, yo, this was, this was pre-Kim uh, Kardashian. Yeah, this yeah. was, uh, yeah. uh, and so I was like, yeah, you know, like, cause you'll see people give you like an eye. I'm like, yo, it's just, it just happened, you know. <laughs> and, uh, like, you know. And I remember, and then the Lord, like, man, he dealt with me, like, in such a fatherly way. And he said to me, he said, Derek, stop telling people you dated. This is the first time you dated out of your race. You've always dated out of your race because none of them was mine, you know? So, like, and he was like, I don't, I don't look at it that way, Derek. Man does, you know? I look at the qualifications through the kingdom, not through your just, you know, just instinct, male instinct and, and just natural. So that kind of cured me, I you know? know? That's right. Because it was uncomfortable. And, and what was ill, ill is a slang. Uh, uh, <laughs> what was ill, you got more eyes in church than we did outside. And so I knew that later on that God would be doing something 
uh, not just in us, but he would be doing something in the church of what we call the color of love. You know what I'm saying? And because there's a lot of advertisement about it, but I ain't going no further. That's just my personal story. Yeah, that's and, good. Uh, and so I sit on the couch. Uh, uh, she sits down. I hear the Lord. Says she's my wife. I'm riding in the back of the car. And uh, I, I'm just processing the night that I, the fact that I heard from the Lord. I, like, I literally didn't know what to do with that. But I, that moment, like, shifted my life, you know, because... I, I just, like, I knew him. You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't deny that voice. Come on. And so later on down the line when movies would come and you would get different choices, yeah. you know, and you would, but you would remember that moment when you heard from the Lord. You're like, yeah. but yeah. I heard him. I know there's some, you know, struggles, and I know they're saying you fly now, but... I remember he said, that's your wife. He didn't give me an option B. He didn't give me an option C. And as a matter of fact, he didn't even audibly call me an actor. I know he chose me as one, but he was audible with my wife. You know what I'm saying? I know that I'm married to her more than I am an actor. So, you want to take it? That's, well, wait a minute. Well, wait a minute, because... Because, okay, you're in the back of the car, yeah. boom, this is yeah. my wife. Main man is putting in his application yeah. up front. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, know, what, what are you thinking? Like, uh, come on, that wasn't you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you were quiet. Yeah, I, and I still, um, I, I'm just sitting back there and just, I can just sense, like. This is it. Like, this is it, but I, it's almost like I'm having a, a, a God's, peace is so on me because at that time I'm staying on the bunk bed I have a BMX bike that's not mine and remember I said I didn't care if he had that's a job right, I didn't care right, if he had a car right, that's right. Right. he did have a job it was yeah. minimum wage but he loved God and yeah. he had a dream and a vision and he used to come and visit me he would ride his friend's BMX bike to come and visit me <laughs> isn't that cute that is <laughs> yeah. uh, so cute. But, but I mean, he had, I he trying. never had vision. He yeah. had. Uh, how do you sit around the house? Nobody's there, and you yeah. you're yeah. treating your wife and your ch child yeah. as though they're there, and you're going. You yeah. talking about vision? Yeah, atmosphere was everything. And, and my mom, she did, you know, she did a lot raising three boys. And during that, we got to stay uh, with different uh, sitters, babysitters. And my, my mom didn't always know, but man, some of the babysitters, the husband and wife, they would be fighting. And it would create this chaotic environment. Wow. And so I always knew that I wasn't just marrying a woman, but I was marrying like an, envir an environment is essential, ah. you know? And so, I, you know, when she, it wasn't just the, the lady, it, it just wasn't the woman, but it was what she brought to the table. And so when I would sit around, the most you important... You marrying mm. an environment. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And your potential baby's mama. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I had some potential situations in the past. Uh, and We're going to talk about that wait, in a minute. Yeah. I want you to go back but, to well, talk about Wait a minute. Wait, 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 <laughs> me one second. Because you got to be even careful who you drop your children off with. Mm. Yeah. No, I hear it all. And, 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 and that environment is working diametrically opposed to your environment, and you dropping that baby off in that environment mm -hmm. because it's, 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 a, it's a cheaper deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doesn't cause more than that environment that's whole. You're, you're just blessing me. I don't know if anybody else is getting anything. So go ahead, sweetie. I apologize. I just wanted to go back to the car. Help yourself. Go back to the car. How were you feeling and what were you thinking and what, what happened after she dropped you And then off? I have something after the car. Mm. Because you talked about options. Mm. You, you start getting work where I can choose. Yeah. Yeah. And inside of that, there were a lot of women that came along with that. Yeah. And just to even 
<laughs> not to just confirm, but I heard the same thing when he came over my house. I, I was, he was in my house when I came home. We were not in a relationship. He was just sitting in there talking to my mom. But as soon as I walked through that door, I heard that's your husband, you're gonna marry him. Mm. I was like, what? Mm. It's my friend, you know, it's, we're not getting married. And 30 minutes later, my girlfriend had dropped me off. By the time she walked in her house, I told him, I said, excuse me. I ran upstairs and I called her and I said, I'm gonna marry him. She was like, girl, no, you're not. I said, I am, I'll tell you later. And I hung up the phone. I never said anything to him. I think three months later, he was proposing. Yeah, and I said, come on, do it now. Cause I already knew she was my wife. All I wanted to know is that, if, can you be a first lady? And she said, sure, I can wear hats. <laughs> And I hate hats. I can't believe I even told you yes. I just knew the call of God in my life. I knew she was going to be. But but come on, we can talk about us yeah. anytime. We have them here. Yeah. Come, so you got you got the part she wanted to know, and then the part I wanted to. Okay. So um, in the, in the back of the car, I was like pretty pretty numb, or as they say now, I was I was woke. Um, you know, I, I was woke. What is that? Is that slang too? You got yeah, to it's like time Ill, to get. It's time woke. to get woke. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's time like, to be get woke. Get woke. Like, it's time to get woke. Get conscious. Like get pay conscious. attention. Pay yeah, attention. Yeah, yeah. You know um, and so, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm literally like numb, you know, in the back of the car because it was like. You reading scripture, but it came alive for me that day. And up to that point, it was just like I had just been uh, in life or a part of life, but I had not been enjoying it or conquering it. And it was like God's voice shifted reality mm. for me. And so I'm sitting in the back, and I hear my man like he's putting his bid in, he, he you know. In. And I'm like, and, this, yeah. and I'm sizing him up. I'm like, he's light skin and all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, but at the same time, you know, it was a peace, and I wasn't sure what was happening with her and him. And uh, all I knew that presently I didn't have, you know, a lot. But I, I, I knew as a kid, for growing up in the environment that I did. Uh, like the Lord began to show me uh, my, my future. And it, it, it's, what's easy to talk about now has not always been easy to talk about on interviews because on interviews, it was this portrait of humility. I would call it false humility. Okay. And, but being here with family, you can, I, well, I uh, we're talking about true humility because it was like the Lord began to show me uh, parts of my, my life. And it never fit until I heard his voice, you know? It was just like, ah, that's it. So the end of the seminar, it's a two-day seminar, right? Or three-day? It was three-day, man. It was three-day. Saturday night, Saturday, and half a Sunday. And this day, too. Uh, when yeah. she's taking you home. Yes. Yeah, this is day night two. Night two, so you got another session. Yeah. Okay. And so, okay, uh, but girlfriend just dropped you off, man. Man, she dropped me off. I so I went back. But you got this check. I got another woman. I got another woman. You cheat. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so Sophia calls me. She calls me and asks me a question, and I happen to be at my girlfriend's house, and you know I have to like kind of, you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, like, uh, I'm like, well, just put on worship and just, it'll, yeah. Oh, so because I was new to the things of the Lord, um, after that seminar, I was opened up to a whole lot of things spiritually, meaning that, um, well, you know, when you go through a really great, say it's a marriage seminar, and then afterwards the attack would try to come, especially with a baby Christian. Mm -hmm. um, for me, there was, this was my first time fasting and fasting and going to a seminar of this level. And there, this couple is very anointed. We've been going to their seminars for the last 18 and a half years. Oh, I love so it. They're, oh, you would just love, you. we have to put you guys in contact, Definitely. but for Definitely. sure. Um, but I went Which home. Which has been, if I yes, may yes. stick a pin, don't forget about fasting first time. Yes. <clears throat> Which has been possibly one of the anchors for your success in marriage now, your continuation 
of going back to that same foundation and the same place that's been pouring into you concerning marriage. Yeah, feeding your marriage. Go ahead. Yes, absolutely. So I, I went home that night and all of a sudden I just sensed darkness. Um, I didn't know it was a demonic attack. I just sensed darkness and I just, I'm not trying to freak anybody out or anything. I just, I sense darkness. Has anybody ever sensed darkness? Absolutely. Has anybody ever had your bed shaking and you're like, what is going on? Uh, well, that's happened. Not and quite the bed. Yeah, yeah, so. well, <laughs> not that night, but that's happened. And that was years before, but this, I just am being very transparent. You're scaring me no, now. No, this no. was, this Hey, was, hey, <laughs> listen, let me tell you something. Let me jump in. Remember she's talking about the whole New Mexico thing? So, you know, so gangster in faith takes me up to this place, uh, this house, and we're married at this time, but y'all have to hear this. <laughs> she takes me up to this house, and she was like, okay, you know, no, nobody lives here, but somebody owns it, and we're just running around the house seven times. I'm like, oh, shoot, okay. And this chick pulls out some little David and Goliath small sack and start sprinkling sage. I said, oh, shoot. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'll tell no. You why. Oh, I'll no, tell you. no, no, no. Oh, we will not do this. You know? I said, what is that? She was like, it's just sage. Sage. You don't need no sage. You know? Go ahead. Go ahead. That's when this I was a baby Christian. Experience. This was my this was year one that we were married, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Uh, in in Native American culture, and we went to counseling for that, and our yeah. pastor straightened Yo, out. Fam, <laughs> we did, we look, did. Look, another slang, fam, I was out. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm an actor anyway. I don't need to be going through this stuff. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So and, and counseling, that was year one that we were married, by the way. And when I was, my bed shook, it was like probably like 15, no wait, no, because we've been married 18 years. My gosh, time went by so quick. Yeah, it would have had to have been like maybe, could I say, if it's 18, that had to have been like 25 years ago or something that wow, happened once. Yeah. I wasn't saved and I was in all kinds of different religious yeah. stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but in the Native American church, the way that you bless somebody, mm -hmm. um, you have Mother Earth, you have the elements, you have sage, you get the sage and you sprinkle the sage. It's not saying voodoo, Judy, right, booty, right, right. you know, it's just saying um, mother nature, bless this home. So that's the heart that this it was coming from. Use. But, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. but we went to counseling and mind you, we went to counseling for the first six to eight years, like every other month, mm. constantly like going to counseling. Is this post or pre? Oh, this was after we got married. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was a lot of things that, for me, that I needed to work out in me, like that atmosphere that I was brought up in, I needed to know the Word of God. So our pastor and First Lady just made themselves available. We were in counseling for four to six hours. Um, just I needed to get everything out, and I needed to know the Word, and I was hungry. I just wanted to know the truth. I just wanted to live right, and my heart was... If I'm doing something not right according to the Word, just correct me, and I'll do what the Word says. And that was my heart, even though my pastor would, he would give us wisdom in the word and it didn't make sense. And it, I was like, well, I don't want to do that. That doesn't, that's not okay. But it was the word. And I always thought, well, you know what, if I'm here and God has appointed these people over me, I'm going to trust and take their word, whether I feel like it or think about it, or no matter what I feel or think, I'm putting all of say, that say, to the side. Say that one. Uh, yes. Say that part uh, again. And, and, it is, and that's how Derek and I have purposed yeah. in our heart to do. And it wasn't anything that came out of anything that I was taught growing up, but it was just my heart was hungry to know the word. And, and the Holy Spirit gave me this image, and he said, if your pastor and first lady are at the top, 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 top of a city on the highest building in the whole earth, and then you are on a corner in the midst of the city, would you look to your own wisdom to look on the left and the right to see how far you could go before you make the next left or right turn? And would I just start walking blindly? Or would you say, oh, what do on. you see from up there, down there? To And they'll be like, don't go here, go here, go here, go this, go this. And we would 
all these detours that were put there for us, the no toil tours, detours from our pastor and first lady, so good, so good. we just oh, yielded Jesus. it. And it didn't feel good and I cried, but we did it. And that's why, I mean, the pillars of wisdom that we have, we've had so our pastor, good. there was days when I was like, oh, I don't agree with this, but it doesn't matter because the word says pray, pray for him. And I'm like, oh, in the name of Jesus, okay, I'll do what the word says. And because we've been under their ministry now, 18 and a half years, we helped charter their church. We've been serving in their church. Um, oh, prayer, intercessory prayer, choir, like, and just continuing. And even now we know them for so long. We go to their house. I mean, we, we do everything together. But even knowing them, not getting familiar with them. Because that is a, such a sin. You, 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 you said even knowing even them. Even we know them. Not. Getting me. too familiar. The, having that the spirit of familiarity could just quench the anointing and the wisdom that you draw from the people who are appointed. I mean, we go in their house, like we clean it. Well, we go in to serve. Like when I walk in the door, I'm like, okay, what needs to be done? Does my first lady need her cabinets need to be organized? She lets me in her cabinets. She knows that's my flow and my no, anointing. You're talking about Hollywood here. Notoriety, fame, wealth. Coming under like that. And then the continual council sessions. It's this God. atmosphere is so liberating. You both have shared so much. I, I, are you all? Yeah. You, From, from very angle, some ver diff various angles and aspects of the, the whole covenant, mm. the union, mm. how this is complementing this and how that establishes this. Is the, you play golf? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> There's so many different kind of things uh, in, the, in the swing. The look down, keep your head down, keep your arms straight, legs. You're, 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 you are formulating for us in such a magnificent way to, uh, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm so, I, I'm so glad you're here. We're glad to be here. Um, you know, Dr. B, there's, there's three things that are just coming to my spirit real clear right now. One is the size of the ring and the ring issue. Uh, when Derek and I got married, we didn't have any money. We were homeless, we were living in my car. And we started to get wealth when we learned how to use our faith. But I always thought it was like, well, we'll do it in a year's time. And Derek was like, no, faith does things now, but we just attach our faith onto it. But our pastor said this, because I was in debt when we got married. I was like $40,000 in debt. And Derek had his issues. He wanted to, I want a house, I want this, I want to be established before we get married. And we went to counseling with our pastor and he said, Sophia, will you stay with Derek as he's establishing himself, wanting to get you a house, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, yes, I will. And he said, Derek, will you stay with Sophia as she's working her way out of this debt situation? And Derek said, yes, I will. And he's like, then why don't y'all get married, save money, do this thing together? We thought we had to do this big, huge, like, painting before we took the step into being married, and we didn't have that much money. Uh, I don't think we had any money that day that we went to counseling. As a matter of fact, our pastor blessed us with 20 bucks, and we were like, thank you, Jesus, we can get some food. But the ring issue, the ring God told me, it is not about the size of the ring. It's about the significance, what it means, the covenant. And our pastor said, if God has told you that you are to be together and that you love each other and that this is his purpose, all of that's going to work out. And people are staying away from getting married but still living in sin and expecting God to bless it, but you can't. So when you get married and you do what God tells you to do, the blessings follow you and the, covet, the, the anointing and the marriage will bring in the increase and the supernatural debt cancellation and the ring in its time. 
So Derek and I got married with $13 rings, and we had to keep trading them in because we got them at that little, you know, those little round market, or what those little, in the mall, they have like oh, little stands, kiosks. little kiosks. Kiosk. Kiosk. Yeah, Santa Monica, we went and got $13 rings at a kiosk. It turned green, and we just get another one, <laughs> kept getting another one. But God said, don't ever, don't ever deal with his manhood based on this size That's of good. this rock. Because you had men give you big rocks, and they were cheating like dogs, mm -hmm. and they weren't men of God. But so it was never that issue for me. And three years after we were married, Derek got me a, a like a single band with little diamonds. But I Come knew his on. whole heart was, I was like, where did you get the money to do that, honey? And he was like, I've been saving and my faith is working. And I'm like, hallelujah. <laughs> and then eight years later, he gets this. And, and so, you know, if it comes again, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But God knows my heart, and, and the covenant is far more important than the material things. The material things will come. Yes. They will come, but don't base your yay or nay on that. Yes. And, and I tell you what, when, when we said yes, then we're going to do things God's way, and we're going to get married, and we're going to make this covenant happen, people started sewing into our marriage. Like that, that marriage feast, turning water into wine. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I paid $250 for my dress. I, hand, I got it handmade and it was gorgeous. My, um, his amazing family, they flew us to Jersey City, gave us a wedding. We got a dollar dance, or not the dollar dance. Was it the dollar dance? Yeah, it was the dollar dance. <laughs> and with that dollar dance, we were able to put a, a deposit down for our I apartment. I don't know, slap me and call me silly. What? What is the dollar dance? You know when you dance yes, at the I, wedding I, I, and they, it's the money they, they you, you have oh, the, the purse. the dollar dance. Yeah, not the that dollar, dollar dance. dance. But yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, the dollar dance. Yeah, the, the money dance. Okay, so I know with that. that yeah. we got blessed. Like the blessings just started pouring in. And then, so that was point one, the, the, the ring thing. And the other thing was, we were in counseling a lot because I was like, I'm ready to get out of this marriage. I'm waiting for him to make a mistake. Because marriage was new. I came from a divorced family. Right. I just saw strife. Mm -hmm. And another point, I didn't change my last name until four years later. That's a whole other point. So... Um, I remember Derek came home and thank God for the 99 cent store. We were living at the 99 cent store, man. Yeah. We, I would make some deliciousness in there. But I, I, I cooked really healthy, and Derek wasn't used to that kind of cooking. So one day he comes home, and I'm so excited. I made my dry chicken with my, with my um, broccoli, which is salt and pepper, and because that's how I ate. I worked out a lot. I was extremely healthy. And I sat down, and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm playing the wife thing. And Derek sits down next to me, and I'm just getting in my chicken. And I look over at him, and he's literally like, this but he was pissed off and I'm like what's going on he's like this this food I mean he didn't say much but this food and I'm like oh, I just can't believe you said I'm, just, I'm a woman of God like come on like I've cooked your chicken my heart is in this chicken and, and so I called my pastor called him instantly and I'm like I want a divorce he's like what's going on Derek doesn't like my cooking he doesn't like my chicken it's over it's over I mean I was like and this is the truth you guys and he's like all right come into counseling so he sat us into counseling but I you know what I wanted to be vulnerable to our man and woman with God wow. because I was like a little baby and it says when you come come as a little child Wow. And I was like that little child. If it said, do not do this, I would said, oh, don't do this. Like, okay, don't do that. Like, and, yeah. and I wanted just to keep that pure heart. And to this day, that's my heart's desire is keep the pureness, you know? So we go to counseling. He sits down and he says, what's going on? I tell him the problem and I'm crying. Tissues just, and you think that's so small, but it was really big to me. Um, so he says, okay, Derek, do you know how to cook? And Derek said, yeah, I know how to cook. He's like, then you cook. Uh, and I was like, that's great. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to stay married. <laughs> and then he said, like, wherever yeah, that was the a flow, quick right? That was easy. Yeah. Wherever the flow is in your marriage, let that be your flow. He Where loves the vacuum. This is funny. Derek Luke. I'm at our house. All right, everybody be there with me. I'm in the living room. I'm vacuuming, right? 
Derek's on the other side of the house. He hears that vacuum, all of a sudden you're, <laughs> he walks into the room and takes a vacuum from me. I don't know what it is about vacuuming that you love, honey, but this but he dude like vacuums. He, like he loves it. Well, he practiced at home when you were there for that's a lot right, of that's time. Right. You know, he was taking care of business long before you came along. This is so impressive to me. It seems like the most successful couples are doing things that the couples who aren't so successful won't. That's, that's true. I'm sitting here listening to you all, and there's a reason why your relationship is where it is. There's a reason why our relationship. And then you got those who just totally go against everything that the system has required and wonder why they are having system malfunctions. Um, this has been rich for us. I, I don't know. I, do you think they have, you gotta have some idea of how informative this night has been you, you, by the Spirit of God, please know that you have come in and have complimented what we've been doing here for years. You, you've, you've, put another, you've put another slant and accent on what we try to project and portray. And sometimes hearing it from people we see on the movie screen, it, it has even a greater impact. Um, we see you always in, a, in another venue, but, but to have you here and, and to hear the basics of your, of your faith and the foundation of your faith and love, it, it's, 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 it's so encouraging. Um, Hollywood already has, it, it's, it's, you're transitioning now. Are, are you back in Jersey or you're in both locations? How, how, are, you, how are you? We're literally four months from, we, we were in Jersey since February. We yeah. literally just flew here yesterday and we're going back to California tomorrow. He'll be in, um, filming more in San Francisco. So our, our home base is in California and then we okay. just go where, you know, God has us go. Yeah, I know you've been moving around yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, how does Hollywood affect your relationship? <laughs> you know, I saw you were cookie. <laughs> so you were cookie, I saw you in some other scenes. And Boris was here, Bo Boris told us that, uh, what's the guy that went too far with Nicole? Morris Chestnut. Morris Chestnut. Yeah, he told us, he said, sh he just went too far and he called him and checked him on it. Wow. Yeah, because th there's a way that you make everything look yeah. so yeah. real. Yeah. It looked pretty real to me yeah. when y'all was in that snowstorm or something. <laughs> Matter of fact, we had some footage, right? No, I just... <laughs> well, how does that, does, does that ever cause any, any challenge? We, we've heard how you are maintaining a balance in the relationship. If, if she has a role with another cat like that, Give, give me the skinny, for real. I'll give you the skinny, because yeah, I'm yeah. the girl. <laughs> yeah, right. Th these are excellent questions, too. Okay, good. So, um, this is the best way that I could explain it, and there's two, two portions to my answer. Number one, if you have a Ferrari, would you put a VW Bug engine in that? You could put it in there, but it couldn't do what it was supposed to do. Absolutely. And created and made and uh, function to do, purpose to do. Absolutely. So I am a Ferrari, and I have a Ferrari engine. And 
that's how zoom, I'm able to <laughs> zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> so, like the uh, according to Psalms 139:17, it says that God um, He created us, and that before our all the days of our life were written before they ever took place. So therefore, before I was put on this earth, God designed me for this man and our purpose. That's the first portion. However, when you feel that thing, like you know when a man's looking at you, you can feel that energy or an attraction that a woman may have to you, you know it. Mm -hmm. And when you're spiritual, when you are acute and your senses are I you begin it. to see, see things. The Holy Spirit said he will show you things to come. Absolutely. So there's, there was a, a time when um, he was doing Antoine Fisher. Okay. And I was just praying. And whenever I'm not with him, which is not yeah, you uh, likely, we're worker, constantly, yeah. Three weeks is super duper extraordinary, Max. I think you had to do a miracle at St. Anna with Spike Lee. But like two weeks is our extreme max. Our pastor taught us you guys stay together no matter what. Mm. Derek has me on the set, like whether guys like it, whether people like it, whether females like it, he's got me there. Whether he I likes it, it, whether I like it. Come on, come Man, on. Man, I'll tell you what, two things, and I just want to be so transparent because I pray that somebody will glean from this. Number one, women just praying for your husband because they're on the battlefield. I mean, they are on the battlefield. Praying for them, not just like on a day to day, but like I'm covering Derek for 2018 and 19 and 20, and like I'm not a, re uh, you know, when you're reactive prayer, Absolutely. I want to be a proactive. Proactive, prayer. right? So way and, ahead of the game. Yeah, and I didn't know that we could do that. I thought you're just supposed to pray on the spot, but you know, just thanking God to be a part of our helps ministry. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other rich. Jesus. Ooh, yeah. helps ministry. The advantage of the righteous. Ooh, man. Well, say, say that again. Helps the, the advantage, advantage of, of the righteous. The advantage of the righteous. Oh, helps ministry. That has, oh, man. Derek well, and what, I. You got to say something about that. If there's, I, what about helps that? Helps ministry is, I think, the most epic, beautiful, enriching, prosperous thing that a believer can do. When you position yourself in helps ministry in your church, oh, oh. you're increasing and your gifts and your talents are increasing. Have you ever seen the Karate Kid? Absolutely. Do you remember when Mr. Miyagi said, ah, oh, wax on, wax off. But Daniel's son was like, I want to learn karate. But he was, he was learning karate the whole time. Ooh. That's good. When Derek, when, when he wanted to be, uh, uh, he was an actor. When we got married, Acting wasn't his primary anymore. Our marriage was, and I was his primary. And our pastor said, Derek, all these people were telling you to go to acting classes and to harness your gift and to hone your gift and to do that, which would then call him outside of taking care of me, meaning that he wouldn't be able to keep that job. He would quit his job. He would go to acting classes and pursue his career. But he, we did again what our pastor said. We yielded. It didn't feel good. It didn't look good. But we continued to yield and just do the faith. Uh, Tell your pastor, I'd trade him about four couples for y'all. <laughs> <Really? laughs> I'll give him. I'll give him five. I'll give him five. <laughs> I'll tell him. I'll tell him. And uh, so, uh, helps ministry is like Karate Kid. Your anointing is increasing, and not only is your anointing increasing for your gifts and talents, you're also partaking in their gifts and anointing, and you're receiving a grace and an ability that it's supernatural. Good, so good. It's so supernatural, and you can't count it by days. You can't, like a seed, when you, when you sow it, you don't keep uncovering it and saying, oh, is it growing yet? It's never going to grow. But you have to ignite your faith and keep your faith active. Don't let it sit back and be, keep your faith active. And that's, that anointing is pouring over and watering your talent seed, and you're excelling greatly and taking care of your man of God. Oh, man. Do you know how much you can excel greatly by taking care of your man of God? Yeah, you know he's very well off, and you're a woman of God, they're very well off. But slip them a hundred. I'm, I'm just, man, when we're, I looked for an opportunity, was like, oh man, what, where can I take our pastor to eat? How can we put him on vacation? 
you know, like when they I go to ministers' my conference. Mail just the other day yes, from you got two weeks, three weeks ago. Amen. And that ahead. seed so and I'm saying, these guys are just amazing. He gave us a word. And it was one of his personal personal confessions that we needed. We called him because we needed wisdom. So when he spoke that word, the, the Holy Spirit instantly said to us, you need to sow a seed into that word, to seal that word. And so I was, I think, two uh. weeks late because I needed to federal express it. But can I tell you what happened? You guys, Wow. listen to this. The word that he gave us was what we needed in the season that we just came out of. We were doing things that we had never done before. And we need revelation and word that we'd never heard before. And we needed, when he sowed that seed, the Lord said, that's me speaking, honor me, honor him, honor that word. And you'll see it come to pass. It's not about buying it, but we needed to tap into Absolutely. that anointing like you yes. could, oh man, we needed it. Do you know, after we sowed that seed, we ended up getting mm. the super, remember it's mm. God is... He's, he's God raising, raising up, some, up somebody someplace, somewhere to, to help, use to use their power, their yeah. gift, their influence to help my purpose and, and my and the assignment in the kingdom in Jesus' name. Absolutely. In Jesus' name. And we, post, we posted it up on our refrigerator and our team would look at it and we would say it and we'd confess it and we were standing on it. And why I was having a supernatural blank, I have no idea. But do you know what ended up happening? We needed specific cameras to do what we were gonna do. And we were getting quotes from different people and they're saying, oh, that's a quarter of a million dollars. Easy. That's like this, and I'm like, Lord, you know that that's not what you told us to put into it. And do you know that a man from the world donated those cameras to us for that day, for this much, for that much? And we knew, and, and it's about honor. Honor wins every time. Respect and honor wins. And when you seed sowing is so big, Derek and I are tithers. You must tithe. Oh, That's a system. Lord, I can't this, take you know, and I, This is just the system. <laughs> no, no, and, and, and I no. Mean, you you sweeping. Just, you are sweeping this place clean. I mean, it's. It's just that. It's just the, it, the, 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 we, man. We would have. $50 and our bills were $250. We tithed. We took it before the Lord. We said, Lord, we honor you. We can't make it with this, but we know you can make something out of this. And every time, and this is for somebody else, man, I would be like, babe, I don't have any clothes. And he would say, honey, he'd grab me by the hand and he'd open that closet door. And this was when Derek and I were first, the first couple of years that we were married, he'd take my hand and he'd start calling those things that be not as though they were. He said, babe, you in need to closet. start speaking in the name in, of in Jesus. In the closet. You better call wait, it Calvin wait, Klein. You wait. better call it in the name of Jesus. I speak Calvin Klein. I no. speak my Gucci. I speak, what do you want? Quit, quit no saying way. what you don't have. Say what you want. Like, I mean, this man is a man of God. Like, he is so amazing. He is, he He was prays, talking to oh, chairs man. and tables. Yes, chairs and tables. Like, when, calling those things that be not as though they were. And he had a problem with you sprinkling sage. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. And yes, he good. did. That was good. <laughs> even know yeah. where we were. I know, and yeah. calling those things that be not as though they were. And then he started telling me about our mailbox, because I was all we were getting was bills. Bills, bills, bills. And man, I was just and Derek was like, no, babe. The check I would, is I would get these, I would get these bills and I'd get in that house and I would let that speak to me and I would start becoming all slunched over and just depressed. And he would say, every time that you go, and we do it to this day, every time you go to your mailbox, our mailbox, babe, you start speaking into that mailbox. Checks, you come in from the north, south, east, and west. Money, you come in from the north, south. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And as I begin to do it, I tell you what, Me, we have Jesus. so many checks coming Me, in. Jesus. Like, and 
And Kenneth Copeland also has an amazing um, revelation about tithing the tithe. Absolutely. Now we've gotten to a whole other zone where we take time tithing the tithe before we even get to church. Absolutely. So, but we didn't do that until yeah. what, maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah. But then sowing, tithing, like wow. that's, it's so huge. And this is rich soil right now. This is rich soil. Yeah. Soil. yeah. God, what, and we go. Yes, no, this is, this is really good. Um, sometimes you think you may not feel like it has been, you know, real uh, orderly or just been in some kind of order fashion. We're just like flowing just right kinda, here. Yeah, absolutely. Flowing, yeah. Which are really good nuggets. You have really ministered absolutely. to us a lot. And I was thinking about something um, earlier and never even thought about why I even thought about this. There is an approach or a therapy that is given when you go to, you know, ther different therapists and it's called a narrative therapy. Narrative th th therapy, which you can already see what that is. It's about story. It's like, so if you go to a um, therapist and it's, they're going to, um, introduce you to narrative therapy, what they would do is to have you to discuss your story, to just tell your story. They want you to tell it in story form and they don't want you to take anything out. But then what they will do is they will direct you to the negative parts in the story and they'll help you to rewrite your story and it gives you another perspective on your story because most of the time we look at our story as you know a big picture like how it is opposed to allowing somebody else to hear us tell our story so we can really start thinking about is this really our story mm -hmm. and what happens is it allows you to look at your spouse in a different way because you begin to separate the person from the problem mm -hmm. if you will it's, it's like just storytelling mm. and you know and I'm thinking about you guys it's like you're in the stories you're mm. in the movies mm. you're in you know creating your own world and if I could just really introduce that to you all it's like you're looking at their story and you're hearing their story what does your story look like and it is it the story that you will want to tell everybody and listen to it and allow others to interject and to cause you to maybe rewrite parts of your story so you can have the story that you want to have so you can present it the way God wants us to present it. Because all of us in our lives have something in our story that we don't like. But it's like, okay, how can we rewrite that? Come on you know, that part of our story yeah. to be able to minister to somebody else. Oh, and good. so I think this is great because all you've been doing is telling us your story. Your story. You've been telling your story. And so I know I've received and I know they have received. How, how do they tonight. rewrite their story? They rewrite their story. Well, you, because like most of the time we look at individuals as the problem. Like if I'm telling my story, and I'm all, before I tell my story, I'm already seeing you as my problem. But once I communicate my problem, I realize that you really aren't my problem. It's what you do is the problem. Okay, the Bible. We wrestle not against flesh, flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. That's those but against in powers, it. principalities, powers in high places. The story. Rules and darkness of how it, it goes. Yeah. You know, so we can rewrite it with our words, the words of our mouth mm -hmm. and our like actions. going to the box and their bills and mm -hmm. now I'm rewriting my story mm -hmm. by saying checks in the mail. That's good. I open my closet doors. I speak Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> Come forth. Guys, you gonna you gonna probably consider me carnal, but I asked you about cooking. Oh wait, should I give you part two? Oh yeah, part two. Me one, okay. there was two, and then there's a three. You said there's three things. We know you pray for him in 2020. <laughs> so God is the only one in our tomorrow right now. You got him covered for years to come. Awesome. Number two, you didn't get to. Number two. You know, because Cookie Homegirl. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You're raised right here. Oh, really? And there, her father attended this ministry. Oh, wow. We funeralized him. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, and so when I saw you hanging out with Cookie, <laughs> and, then, and then you grabbed him one time, you know. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what is Sophie feeling? The, well, how does the wife handle that kind of thing. Okay, so we know you got them covered in prayer. Yes. 
So um, I'm a Lamborghini, right? Yeah, yeah. And Ferrari, I can handle things. Ferrari. Ferrari, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Ferrari. And then there's things that ladies know that we're like, there's mm -hmm. just a little too much like in this scene. Or there's just, you sense that. Mm -hmm. And that's when, that's when my, uh, my wheels start going. Does he, does he listen to that? Yes, he does. If, if you come Derek and say, so look, D, that was just yes. a little bit yes. too much. Yes, and, and I'll tell He you, doesn't call you jealous or no. you insecure. No, no, never. He's like, honey, how do you feel about this? Just, he's, Derek, I'm telling you, this man is But did you gentleman. see him up in the cabin when it was snowing? Yes, and I, you know what I was saying to him? I said, babe. You saw that well, scene? My whole thing is, babe, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this, but it's the truth. I'll tell you about one set where I drove off, and then another, I drove off set, and I'll tell you what the Lord okay. told me, but All this right. to address that. In that scene, I was like, babe, you've got to make it look really real. Like, it's got to be, to me, I, I know what, as an actor, like, what is real and what's not, and what... When I saw the scene, I was like, that wasn't real. It's got to be real, babe. And to me, there is an anointing on Derek and a grace on him because I've covered him, because God's telling me how to cover him, that I'm not like, there's no movement. And if there's any fear in there, then I know, wait a second, where's my faith level, number one? And number two is, okay, is there something, there's an open door somewhere that I need to check. But there's majority of the time there's that peace mm -hmm. however okay and, and i i want derek to always be his best that he can be and if there's something that's hindering that moment in time in a scene see these cameras here now imagine them right here and right here and then there's maybe half of the room around you as well and you're trying to do a scene together there's nothing romantic about it mm -hmm. like i know behind the veil um i'm not on set when um, he does those scenes. If so, I will go into my trailer, um, or it, yeah, I'll just wait in there and I'll just be praying. Oh, you don't stick around for the scene? No, nuh-uh. Oh, you can't handle it. I, no, I don't mind. He you doesn't. Can't, you I don't can't mind. Handle. Like it. No, you he, can't he doesn't. Handle it's uncomfortable for Darren. You so saved. What, what about the spiritual? I'm like, baby, he is it not so like, it. I'm cool being there. Derek's like, that's uncomfortable for me. But and then, I can't explain. It's just a supernatural anointing. But let me tell you the flip side. Okay, let's go flip so side. So one day, one time in this particular movie, I was sensing a little more vibrations from the girl than like. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's like, the part we want to hear right now. Something isn't right here. Something isn't right here. I was about yeah, to take yeah. off my hair. Ah, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I love it. Something just it wasn't right. And so I'm like, man, I'm pissed. And, and you know, the can director was legit. You can say pissed. You can say pissed. You can say pissed. It's in the I Bible. I was very upset. I was very upset. Excuse you me. You probably were pissed. I was pissed. My yeah, apologies. No, I was no, very no, upset. No. Um, excuse me. My apologies. No. no. Um, Dee says it all the time. <laughs> I do. <laughs> my apologies. So, um. The, the, the director was pushing the scene, pushing the actors, but I still didn't have that, I just didn't feel good about it. And I'm in the trailer and I'm like, you know what? Forget this, I'm out of here. I got in my car, I drove halfway down the freeway and the Holy Spirit was like, you need to turn right back. Don't ever leave. Don't ever leave your husband's side ever. You got, this will all work out. And so we had a conversation about it, and I was like, honey, to me, that went way too far. We need to have a conversation with the directors. I felt this, and I think that it crossed the line for me. Mm -hmm. And Derek is always gracious. He's never, like, yelled at me for that. He's like, okay, honey, you're right. I apologize, and I repent. And we just deal with it. I love it. Yeah. My apologies. I even get, were, no, but I, I even get upset. Novel. I'm watching, and I'm saying, he's supposed to be saved. And he went, any of y'all ever looked at, he's so saved. He ain't that saved. Look at him in cooking line. Cooking line and care. And, and Cookie's and, amazing. She was, she's, there. the majority, like 98% of the women, they're, we're gracious, we talk, we have conversation, and they're like, how you feel? Is this okay? And this, I'm like, guys, it's about the scene. It's not about feelings and all that. Just squash it. So yeah. she's lovely, amazing. Hello, so how does it all feel to you, Derek? How does that feel to you, Derek? I mean, how, how does it? 
I mean, is there, a, is there a line? Do you sense like, God, this is, I mean, how does the acting piece align with, you know, this is a role. It, you know, I was talking to Denzel about uh, that, that uh, last shoot em up. Training day. Training day. Foul mouth. I'm saying, what did Bishop say to you after that movie? What is it? He said, brother, I'm an actor. This is what I've been called of God to do. And so I do my role and it's just my role. When they say cut, I'm born again. But I, is there a line that you guys feel in your roles that may... I guess this when the interview gets tough right here. That may send the wrong message as a believer. Have you, how, how have you dealt with that? Because I'm sitting there, I'm like, my man, you know, I just saw him at Copeland's meeting. Now, he would cook it. <laughs> Copeland cookie. Copeland cookie. I, He'll chime in. Um, so two things. One, uh, when, when <laughs> no, this, is, <laughs> this is so good. Uh, when in the Bible you have Satan. If Satan was to be portrayed, who would portray him? Like who would do it, and how would they portray him? Would they? Would he be like, oh yes, it's so great. How about that? You got to get just, in total character. You have to be, somebody plays the devil. I don't like, know if I could play the devil. Right, and, and, and this is it too. You know the Holy Spirit is your guide and your comforter and your gauge. There's been things that we have turned down with big dollar signs on it, but the Holy Spirit was like, that's not Really? Yeah, that's not, that's not. And so just having that step-by-step -step personal relationship with Christ wow. um, and knowing what to do and what not to do. The second thing is um, Denzel did training day. Was it after, before Antoine Fisher? Just before. Just before, um, just before uh, Antoine Fisher. So the first time that Derek introduced me to Denzel, they were, he was in the process of casting the female lead for the Antoine Fisher story. And he just was so open and amazing and warm. And I walk yeah, into the room, yeah, he's so generous, absolutely. he's just such a good man. And um, he, uh, he walks me into the room and he was asking my opinion about these two girls. And as we proceeded, he then just hops on the subject of training day. Cause we know that, you know, Denzel's a Christian as well. Absolutely. And he's just giving information like freely. And he said, you know, a lot of, you know, Christians are bashing me because I did this, you know, intense yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. He said, but you know what God told me? And I was like, or he didn't say what God told me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, after I got done reading the script, um, I purpose in my heart to write down the scripture that comes to my heart that conveys the vision of the script. He said he read the script, he turned it over, and he wrote down on it, the wages of sin is death. So he wanted to be the epitome of the wages of sin. He wanted wow. to be the epitome wow. of sin in wow. that movie. Yeah. And at the end, apparently, um, they wanted to do a training day part two. And Denzel's, really? his, his whole take was, you remember how he died? Yeah. He didn't just die with a bullet. He's like, make me really die because that's what happens when you sin. The wages of sin is death. So... Um, that's what happened. And he yeah, he didn't him. go yeah. into all yeah. of that. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. And that's what he shared with us. Yeah. And that was... He must have gotten that revelation after he talked to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's progressive. Revelation is progressive. And a lot of times you get involved in something and you'll never know what God had in store for it later for you to minister right out of the crucible of an event that uh, that you thought was so so horrible and, and he has taken the evil and turned it around for his good which is powerful talk to me yeah. um, well which part are we talking about um, so it, cookie okay <laughs> talking about cookie uh, I, I've, I've never ever gotten so much uh, maybe maybe uh, did you gotten so much really so uh feedback. <laughs> i know i know i'm right there with feedback him. yeah um, the cookie, the cookies 
Um, really? But, but but Empire in in its general um, had opened up a whole new uh, space for me as a uh, as an actor. Um, uh, Empire wasn't something that I looked at in the script and said, "Man, I just want to do this." For me, uh, doing you know Antoine Fisher type roles, right? Like, Sidney Poitier yeah. and Denzel and, and doing all those uh, films to me were like it's where my heart and the guys that I looked up to uh, you know Denzel and Pacino and Jeffrey Rush I didn't know them as lovers on screen I knew them as actors yeah yeah and uh, I never even thought about being a romantic anything on screen um, the whole romantic came in when a script would come or my wife would mention it and go like, you know, like, uh, uh, like was it baggage, baggage claim was the first. So we did baggage claim and I was just like, I read the script, but all I'm thinking is like, man, there's kissing in here, you know? And I'm like, wait, hey, here, read the script, right? Yeah. Cause I, I, I'm getting a, I'm getting a witness, but I'm like, look, there's like, there's kissing in this, I don't. And for me, the professional aspect of acting is when, uh, and up to, Taraji has probably been one of the most professional actors, let alone actresses I've Come ever on. worked with. Come on. Uh, she, she knows her craft, and she knows, I mean, I don't know if she mind me saying this, but she understands the, 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 the gender side of it. But the way she holds herself is a testament to where she is today. Um, so in, in doing that scene uh, with her, I'm sort of jumping um, baggage claim. The way that the Holy Spirit will always guide me, you kind of, to play the role, you got to play the role. Absolutely. But to uh, act the role or faith the role, it's a something totally different. Mm -hmm. Because moment by moment, you're believing for what you need for that moment. It's like ministry. And so I remember in like uh, baggage claim and other movies where it could require me and that actress to spend more time than that's needed. Okay. And, but the Lord kind of set the stage in the audition. In the audition, sometimes you guys, it's called chemistry reads. It's to find out whether you and that other actress or actor is vibing. And I walked in, instructions of my wife, uh, and the Holy Spirit, <laughs> sometimes the same I'm thing. always giving you an acting yeah, yeah, tips, like, right, right. do this with her hair, so, so, it's really good on camera. Yeah, so I, I walked in, and I was the least favorite for that role. Um, and that's why they asked me to read. And I, and I remember, and when I read for it, just, I just sensed like an anointing came. And I'm like, but why? I mean, it's kissing. And so... The Lord was like, I will keep you. Come on. I will establish you. I would never put you in a situation to compromise. And so what I'm setting up is as you shoot these movies and shoot this movie, you don't have to close your distance mm -hmm. to demonstrate the passion and love. Okay. I will, I'm, the, I'm your passion coach. You don't have to spend time with that actress. Well, somebody you, you shouting know, out there. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, like your wife, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, like woo. Yeah, like you don't you don't have to cross the line to to cross the line. You know, you can you can operate as this character, but you can operate it by faith because once you get in uh, close proximity, it's imperative that you know the law of faith. Because you're dealing with your sense realm. And your sense realm says, oh, I should go home with her. We got so much chemistry. She's feeling me. Like, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. but then the Holy Spirit goes like, no, this is where it stops. You know, like, and so I'm on screen and it's forbidden or we would call it method acting. Method acting is when you just embody everything your character is, is, is experiencing so that you can re relive this yeah. experience. Yeah, get in it. And get into it. Yeah. But as a spirit actor, your character is crafted from your spirit first, mm -hmm. not from your method, you know? 
So I'm, I'm in this proximity with, with the actress, and the Lord was like, you don't have to, you don't have to compromise who you are and spending time with her. I'll show up because I showed I'm the one that got you the job. Mm. So let me continue, let me finish the job. So when I'm on set with her and Cookie, it was interesting because, I mean, we're acting out all this passion, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit is like setting a barometer and saying, look, this is, this is what you do. This is what you don't do uh, between takes. You don't get in any conversations. You don't get anything off your back. Right, right. You don't have casual conversations I, with I your actress. That. When they say action, right. then you act on your faith. Just like the secretary at the office. Exactly. Yeah, what? Right you ain't that, going that out with her. Oh, oh, yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. I was going to say no. something like that. <laughs> uh-huh. What? <laughs> no, but it's, 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 it's imperative that no matter what we do, that That's we true. employ the laws of faith. Because something happens when you're, when you, when you're not aware of it. And you get it in, in what you would call a steamy scene. You don't even have to be exchanging fluid. Yeah. It's the fact that two bodies are touching. Yeah. And when two bodies are touching, the only thing can, that can separate you is spirit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can, like there's there's nothing there's no guard that will stop you and say, hey, why why let's take this thing to another level? Because it's so real. It feels so I mean, you can sense it. But I certainly did. I yeah, was like, Damn. Like, so, so, so when I'm good seeing, job, Derek. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so, so again, what, what stands out is the platform that Empire has provided spiritually was not something that I could have calculated. And uh, we have friends. I think you know he wouldn't mind me, David Ayello. Uh, who uh, played Martin Luther King in Selma. Right, right. Uh, we, were, we were on a forum together, and he began to share how, you know, like the Lord led him to do a role. And he says, this is not something that I would, you know, say, hey, go watch me in this movie. But the outcome was that I think, because uh, he said it publicly, so should, can I, should I mention the names? No? Yeah. So I think Matthew McConaughey, I think Nicole Kidman, and all these other people was in this movie, and he wasn't playing a, you call a Christian part. But the director said, hey, listen, before we start shooting, I have what you would call a, a, a spiritual uh, consultant that I consult with. So before I do anything, uh, I want him to pray for us. Wow. And so uh, the guys that was in the circle, and it was about three or four other people probably uh, represent some of Hollywood's even higher echelon. And after he finished praying, one of the actors came up to me, came up to him and says, hey man, man, I don't know what happened, but uh, that feeling that I got, man, that feels better than drugs, man. Wow. And so the Lord was just showing me I'm, I'm bigger than absolutely the box that you put me in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, it, it doesn't it's not giving you a liberty because there you're responsible for the word that you hear you're responsible for the wisdom the understanding like you get top wisdom you get understanding you absolutely. you hear from generals absolutely and you know your marching orders absolutely and you know what's crossing the line so the this word is for this time and for you on those sets and so when david said that he just kind of confirmed what I have been wrestling with, because for me, I, I could go without the kissing scenes. I yeah. I rather model right. Gary right. Oldman and Al, Al Pacino, and right. you know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't even think about. I had a very hard time on Antoine Fisher. I think Denzel was behind the thing saying, "Kiss him, man, kiss him," <laughs> and I'm like, and there's a scene in Antoine Fisher where. You know, I kiss her and I start crying. But <laughs> that wasn't acting. That was me going, man, I gotta go home. Like, I, gotta go. I, got, I, I don't know how I'm gonna explain this thing. You know, so I don't know. Hopefully, I didn't dance around it. But acting has been an experience for me. Uh, and 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 because I, I, you know, I said I, I would like never never curse uh, in a role. You know, I said that. I, I'm not saying God said, mm-hmm. 
what I would say is that I know that the Lord, you know, called me to do certain roles. Like Antoine was 98% oh more profanity than what it was. Yeah. Uh, when we got the movie, uh, it went down to 2%, and then the love scene was, it was heightened. We were supposed to do whatever, and Denzel came out of the booth, and he says, you know what, listen, and I've been thinking this, about this for months, and he, he says, listen, um, you know, from just what we've been doing on screen and how we've been taping, he says, look, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot it, and it's gonna be an insinuation that you guys oh, that's great. were, were, were right. intimate. Yeah. And he says, I just feeling like we don't need to go Come all on. through the sheet. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so does that? that? Yeah, and when the grace is there, Absolutely. it's there. But you know when you've crossed that grace. Mm -hmm. And that's when the hurt and the emotions start coming in. And Derek and I talk about it. Because we're not perfect and we have missed it. And we have compromised and we have um, felt like, man, I could have done that better. Mm -hmm. But now here you have it on camera. But again, we just forgive ourselves and walk in faith and let the grace be greater than the mistake. Mm -hmm. And that's how we live. And we purpose in our heart to do, uh, we love the Lord. We just want to do what oh, he know. wants us to do. Absolutely. You know, and we miss it like everybody else. But I, I sure believe that as we've grown in the things of the Lord, that we miss it less, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and just keeping that grace, like keeping the grace. We, yeah. we, we have to stop, man. And we, 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 it's, Listen, we are very, very honored, humble. You guys represent us well as our brothers and sisters in the body. Yeah, come on, give it up. Because we, got, we, we have the right representation in Hollywood, and we're, we're, we're thankful that your standard is such, mm. and that you are led by Holy Spirit, mm. and even led you here on tonight.